We thank God that you are able to join us as Christ Zion Assembly. Thank you for always uh, supporting us and thank you for uh, being here. We are to be blessed by a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful time of worship and prayer. My name is Job Wesonga and I hope that even as we worship and even as we pray, even as we go before the Lord, my prayer unto you is that you will experience God. My prayer unto you is that even in the presence of God, even as you join us in worship, even as you join us in prayer, even as you join us in the word, the Lord God Almighty, our Master Jesus Christ, the Governor, the Holy Ghost, who has been left uh, to be able to uh, direct, lead, and guide us into all righteousness and truth, will continue to minister unto me, will continue to minister unto you, will continue to minister unto your situations, your families, your children, your husbands and your wives, your careers and the work that of the ministry that is in your heart, that which we have always said that, you know, he has called us according to his plan and according to his good nature. So let us pray even as we begin. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. We honor your holy name that, Father Lord, every single time we come before you, it is by power, it is by the Holy Ghost, it is Jehovah, my Father Lord, by the Spirit that we worship you. We, gl we glorify your holy name, Jehovah. Thank you because in every single time, it is you who comes to minister unto us. We bless you. We honor your holy name. You are king. You are king. And you said, you said you never leave. Rain in my Rain life. In my life. Rain, in my life. Rain in my life. You are king. You are king. And you reign. And you reign forevermore. Rain in my Rain life. life. Rain in my life. Rain in my life. We want you to reign. Rain in my life, rain in my life, rain in my life, rain in my life. We want you to rain, Jesus. And your promises, your promises remain. We trust you, we trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. You are true, yes, you, you are. are true. And you remain the same. And your promises remain. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. Cause you are true, yes, you, you are. are your promises and your promises remain we trust you lord we trust you lord to aqua mini we trust you lord we trust you lord we trust you lord to aqua mini we trust you lord we we trust you, Jesus. We trust you, Lord. With every ounce of we trust us. you, Lord. With all of the heart, we trust you, Lord. We trust you, Jesus. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. Christ, with all of our being, we trust you. We trust you, Jesus. We thank you for your promises always remain the same. You have never left us, nor will you forsake us. We love you, Jesus. We worship and adore your name. For your name is great. Your name is powerful, Jesus. Trust you, Jesus. We trust you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus, and we lift up our hallelujahs to you. 
the highest praises to you, Jesus. We worship you and adore you, Jesus. You are great, Lord, you are. As we sing our 
when I worship him and sing about his love let him put a new song in your mouth Jesus your love never fails you love me even at my worst you care for me even when I fail you
your love is everlasting oh God Lord we thank you because your love is steadfast and it's not based on what we do we have been unfaithful but you continue being faith even in the midst of our iniquities oh Jesus you continue to be Lord your love never fails it never gives up it never runs out of me and if you are joining us at this time i want to remind you that god's love is beyond what we can ever think or even imagine his love is steadfast to you and me regardless of the space you are at this is just a reminder that God loves you so much. Allow me to read a scripture from Psalm 103. Verse 11 says, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. Just a reminder that God's love precedes whatever we might think or even imagine. His grace is above everything that we may even, we can't put it in a box. That he shows us his masses and the psalmist says that his masses are new every morning. That's why we want to say everlasting. Your love is time when all else faith never ends. Your glory goes beyond. Come and say everlasting, everlasting. Your light will shine. Never ending. One more time, everlasting. Your light will shine, will not never end. Your glory, come say everlasting. Cause your love never fails and it never gives serve, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Just declare it. your love. Never ends. Your love, it never leaves us. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails. It never gives us. It never runs out on me. One more time. Your love never fails. Never gives us. Never runs out on me. Your love. Love. 
Lord, we thank you for your love. At this moment, oh God, we thank you for the work that you did on the cross. We thank you, oh God, for giving us an opportunity to be called your children. Thank you for salvation, Jesus Christ. Your love is steadfast, oh God, to those who fear you. We are grateful for your love that you show us every, every single day. You give us an opportunity, oh God, to work on our relationship with you, and we are grateful. We thank you, Jesus, because of your love. We thank you for your love, Jesus. You are worthy of every praise, oh God. We thank you for your love, oh God. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies. Lord, we exalt you. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our honor, Jesus. Receive all the praise. Receive all the honor, Jesus. Come on, just lift your voice to him and adore him. He's worthy of our praise. Jesus, oh God, we thank you for your love. We thank you, oh Jesus, for your grace. Thank you for dying on the cross for sinners like us, oh God. Thank you, oh Jesus Christ, that every single day, oh God, your heart is towards us, Jesus. Thank you for every day, oh God, you are looking out for man, oh God. Jesus Christ, who are we that we can stand before you, oh God? We who are mortal beings standing before an immortal God, Jesus, we exalt your name, oh God. Jesus, we exalt you. We exalt you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, we exalt you, God. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. Cause your name Oh he make me we more cozy Oh I put you and me lele we thank you Jehovah God we honor your holy name my father thank you that Father Lord you are always with us thank you Jehovah my father Lord that you have promised that you will never leave us thank you my God that daddy every single time we lift up our hearts and we lift up our hands and we lift up our voices and we lift up our eyes Jehovah my God you are continuously ministering unto us Jehovah God thank you my father Lord that indeed you are Emmanuel you are God with us he who still and tarries with us he who never gives up on us Jehovah God thank you that father every single time you speak your word it is your word that goes forth not to come back to you in vain but Lord you send it out Jehovah that daddy it will accomplish that which you have sent it out for oh God even in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ so I pray in Jesus mighty name thou Lord my God would you minister unto our various situations in the name of Jesus Jesus Christ, thank you, and we honor your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, amen, and amen, and amen. Karibuni sana. I am so privileged and honored to have you uh, and, and just to be able to fellowship together with you. Thank you so much for always supporting Christ Zion Assembly. This is where we say that it is the assembly of those who have been called to go to Zion together with Christ Jesus, who has gone ahead of us to be able to prepare a place for you and for me. That as we go forth, we go forth in confidence, knowing that Christ Jesus, who is our high priest in the order of Melchizedek, has already prepared beautiful places, beautiful mansions, beautiful spaces for us to be able to fellowship and to be with him and to be with the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. And we speak about the identity that we have in Jesus Christ. We speak about the privileges that we have in Jesus Christ. This mighty freedom that Christ Jesus has come, that we should be reconciled back to God and we should be set free from all bondages. He has become our redeemer. He came to redeem us from our slavery. And we have been made and acknowledged and proclaimed as free people, those who belong to Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. So we are in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. Last time we talked about God having a master plan for all of us and having called us and sent us out you know according to his plan and by that we have free and open access to god and we can be able to enter his presence with thanksgiving and with confidence knowing that there is a greater sacrifice for us 
in the spiritual realm. He that represents and speaks our name for the glory and honor of his holy name. So there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. There is nothing that can separate us from that which God and Christ has done. There is no one who can cancel our sonship. There is no one who can put to jeopardy that which Christ has already accomplished in which he said that I have overcome the world. So be of good cheer. So this day we begin from verses 5. Last time we came up to verses 5 where we said we have open access to God given by Jesus Christ. And there is nothing and no one who can be able to thwart that. So beginning from verse 5 it says, There is no end to what has happened in you. It's beyond speech. It's beyond knowledge. Verse 6, The evidence of Christ has been clearly verified in your lives. Verse 7, just think you don't need a thing, you've got it all. All God's gifts are right in front of you as you, want ex as you wait expectantly for our master Jesus to arrive on the scene for the grand finale. Verse 8, and not only that, but God himself is right alongside to keep you steady and on track until things are all wrapped up by Jesus. Verses 9, God, who got you started in this spiritual adventure, shares with us the life of his son and our master, Jesus Christ. He will never give up on you. Never forget that. I'll read from the African Study Bible. And it says from verses 5, it says, um, Through him, God has enriched your church in every way with all of your eloquent words and all of your knowledge. This confirms what I told you about Christ is true. Now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this for he is faithful to do what he says and he has invited you into partnership with his son Jesus Christ our Lord. Going back to verse 6, because that is what we always do. And like I've said before, it is reading the word of God and seeing what the word of God is telling us. And therefore, having that identity that Christ came to be able to impart on us that we should be the children and the sons of God. Verse 5. There is no end to what has happened in you. It's beyond speech, beyond knowledge. Verse 6. The evidence of Christ has been clearly verified in your lives. There is no end to what has happened. Your reconciliation to God, my reconciliation to God, the, the, the impartation of sonship and the identity that we have in Jesus Christ, that there is no end to it. You know, there is nothing in the heavens, nothing on earth, nothing under the earth that can separate us from the love of God. Well, for Paul would say somewhere else that I pray that you will understand and find out the revelation of how deep the love of God is for you and how wide the love of God is for you and how high the love of God is for you. The grace of God that has been released in your life is so beautiful and so permanent and so intimate from God that nothing, no one can undo it. Whatever it is, there is no end to it. There is no end to what has happened. Your baptism in Jesus Christ, your victory in Jesus Christ, the glory of God that has been poured unto you through Christ Jesus and the blood that was shed upon the Calvary tree, there is no end to that. You becoming the beloved of the Lord, the very apple of the eye of God, there is no end to that. The, the, the idea and the fact that Christ Jesus, God the Father, and the Holy Ghost dwells in you because you believe in Jesus Christ. There is no end to that because what has happened is beyond speech and is beyond knowledge. We cannot explain it. I cannot even try to start to explain it. I, can even, I cannot even try to start to voice it, that which you have, that, that which has happened. You know, the mystery that Paul keeps on saying, that the mighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, 
who created everything and created you and me has come to make an abode within me and within you. That is beyond knowledge. Even science cannot try to explain how a mighty God, how a mighty being can fit in a tiny, tiny, tiny small thing. And, and you know, he, he, that small thing does not burst up. That is what has happened here. That the mighty God, the great God, the mighty everlasting God, the one who sits upon all, all the surface of the earth and he has made the earth his footstool. Imagine how big the earth is and yet it is simply a simple stool to God. And this is the God that has come and dwelt inside you. It is beyond speech. It is beyond knowledge. We can read, you know, there's a, it's a point where the book, the Bible says that if the things that Christ Jesus did on the surface of the earth were to, re, were to be recorded, that is John saying, you know, there is no amount of books and literature that can even try to start to try to put those, those things, you know, together and, 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 and fill them up. Now, imagine this God, not just Jesus Christ, but this God who is God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Ghost now dwells in you. That is beyond speech. That is beyond knowledge. And the good thing about it is there is no end to it. Imagine that. There is no end to it. There is, there is nothing that is going to stop that. Ah, I love the Lord. There is nothing. That, that it means that the, the powerful, mighty God who dwells in me, will tarry with me, will go with me, will stand with me to the glory of God. And that is why verse 6 says, Now the evidence of Christ has been clearly verified in your lives. Now Paul is talking to a people that, you know, he is encouraging them. You know, already we know that few verses down the line, Paul is starting to say some things that are not very good. However, he is saying, hey, the evidence of Christ has been clearly verified in your lives. So the question I will pose unto you is, has the evidence of Christ been verified in your lives? You know, when you walk, can someone verify that, hey, that guy, that lady, that man, that woman, that child, indeed has the life of Christ boiling into him, boiling through him, Beyond, in verse 5, it says, you know, this mighty God, you know, this that has happened into us, that God has come to dwell within us, that the Holy Ghost has come to dwell within us, that God, the, the Son has come to dwell within us, is permanent. The question in verse 6 is, is it verifiable through your life? Can I see you and see Jesus without you having to talk to me? Without you having to tell me, the Bible says. Without you having to say, I am born again. Can I see that you are born again? Can you verify to me? Can you verify to your neighbor? Can you verify to your colleague at work? Can you verify to your, to, to your fellow students and colleagues in the class that actually my life is not my life anymore, but the life of Jesus Christ? This life, the evidence of Christ has been clearly, and not guesswork, clearly, clearly, the things that Christ did upon the love of God, God has brought in grace, and we'll be reading that down there in verse 7, God has brought down grace, God has brought down his love, God has brought down his mercies, God has brought down his everlasting life and trusted you and I to dwell and portray that life. So, do I love like Jesus does love? Am I merciful as Jesus is merciful? Am I as gracious as Jesus is gracious unto me? Can I portray the graciousness and the gentleness and the power of God and the presence of God in my environment? Am I affecting my environment as Jesus would affect his environment or am I the talk of the plot? In bad terms. You know, the, 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 the thing that has really ailed the church is that most Christians, and I am not uh, excluded out of it, is that 
We are good, very good at, you know, spiritual gifts. You know, let me speak in tongues. Beautiful, powerful. Prophecy. Everybody is running for prophecy. Healing. Everybody is running for healing everywhere. But where is the fruit of the Holy Ghost? Where is the gentle heart? Where is long suffering? Where is self control? Where is it? Oh, that the evidence of the life of Jesus Christ will be so verifiable through our lives as we portray the fruit of the Holy Ghost even in our environment. So I am challenging myself and I am challenging yourself. Can we run for gentleness instead of just running for miracles? Can we run for self-control? Can we run for obedience? Can we run and run for righteousness? Can we run and run for that which God calls us that we are the dispensers of his grace? Verse 7 says, just think you don't need a thing. You've got it all. For all God, God's gifts are right in front of you as you wait expectantly for our master Jesus to arrive on the scene, on the scene for the grand finale. You have all. You've got it all. God's gifts are right in front of you as you wait expectantly for our master Jesus to arrive on the scene for the grand finale. Are you warming up for the gentleness that is in heaven? Because in heaven there are no miracles, my friend. Because miracles in heaven is the order of the day. So are you warming up for the righteousness that is in heaven? Are you warming up for, 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 for the joy that is in heaven? Are you warming up for the peace that is in heaven? Or are you so fixated on the things that are on this surface of the earth that even have been used to manipulate and, and, and take, take advantage of you because you are searching and, 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 and looking and, 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 and pursuing the physical things that your eyes can see? Verses 8, and not only that, but God himself is right alongside to keep you steady and on track until things are all wrapped up by Jesus. I love that verse. And not only that, now, Jesus Christ, the Lord, he is given, first of all, he has given as his grand master plan. And not only that, he has come as a father and he has given us all things, all Oh, the grace. We are the dispensers of the grace of God in its various forms. And I think that, have, uh, that is a point that I've been labored enough. We are the dispensers. You know, a dispenser stands there with water. Not for itself, but for the person who comes to drink of that water. You go there to a dispenser, you press something, and water comes out, and you refresh. And you take that cup back there. Are you a dispenser of God's grace? Anyway, God has poured all this grace into you. All of it. So that you are a dispenser of all those things. Not only that, but also that he is there with you. Verses 8. And not only that, but God himself is right alongside to keep you steady and on track until things are all wrapped up by Jesus. You know, it is so beautiful to have not only a father who has given you everything, but also is right there with you. Is right there with you. He is saying, you know, he's saying, give me your right hand and let me lead you. The problem is that we always want to lead ourselves until things go sideways and then we start saying, daddy, where are you? And he said, no, 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 I'm just here. He is right there alongside me. He is right there alongside you in this journey of dispensing the grace of God on the surface of the earth. In this journey of being gentle, the church of Christ, can we start to be gentle? The church of Christ, can we start to, to be gracious? The church of Christ, can we start to do all these things? Because God is right there alongside with us to congratulate us, to comfort us, to push us on, to encourage us on, to tell us, my son, keep on going. I am here. I can see you. I can be able to see that you are trying. I am here. And if any any point you want to go off track, he says, he is there to keep you steady and on track. 
He is there to keep you steady. It's so beautiful. You know when a child is being taught how to walk, this child does not know how to walk. He is trying, she is trying. She is there trying and he is there trying. But the mother or the father is there. And his eye or her eye is fixated on that baby. There is no point where the father or the mother can put his eyes or her eyes off that baby. Why? Because his and her work is to keep that child steady and on track so that that, that child does not fall down. That is what God does to you. What is, that is what God does to me. Uh, as we walk this salvation work, as we walk this, the, the, this, this walk of dispensing the grace of God, he is there. His eye is constantly upon me. His eye is constantly upon you to keep you steady and on track. There's one thing my mother used to do to me that has always, you know, uh, amazed me. Before I went out, and he, she would allow me to go anywhere. But there's one statement she used to tell me. I trust you. Ha! The moment she would say that, even if I go anywhere, I would see her eyes here and her, her lips telling me, my son, I trust you. I will tell you for free. I, I, I was not able to do some things. And it kept me steady and on track, that statement. I trust you. So fathers and mothers, yes, you can learn from my mama. But anyway, God is there to keep you steady and on track until things are all wrapped up by Jesus. Is it not beautiful? Is it not beautiful to know that my God is there and I am as a child who is trying to walk and even though I, even though I will make a mistake, he is there. And he is not there to condemn me. He is not there to say, look at you, you wretched human being. He is there to keep me steady and on track. The question is, are you helping God to keep his children steady and on track? Or are you the one who discourages them and puts them out of the faith and of the church because of something small that they have been unstable a little bit? By the mere fact that God is there to keep us steady, it means that we will be unstable sometimes. It means that God will be there to hold us so that we are steady. So it doesn't, when, you, when we become unstable a little bit, hey, rise up, rise up, because God is there to keep you steady and on track. And then verses 9, God, who got you started in this spiritual adventure, shares with us the life of his son and our master Jesus. He will never give up on you. Never forget that. God, not anybody else. God is the one who started this spiritual adventure. And I love it because there it says it is an adventure. It is an adventure. This spiritual life, imagine going to hike on the most beautiful mountain on the surface of the earth. That is how your spiritual life should be. It will be an adventure. And this adventure has been commissioned and started by God himself. Hmm? God, who got you started in this spiritual adventure. Yes, he, it is an adventure. Have fun as you love God. You know, have joy. You know, some of us Christians, we are so born, we are so born again that we don't know even what joy looks like. We don't know how to be happy. We don't. We are so fixated on some rules and laws that we cannot even start to be happy in the Holy Ghost. Just laugh. You're so serious. Even when you're walking on the surface or on the road, you're so serious. So much so that people have, have, have come up with a spiritual, a spiritual, you know, code of walking. You know, this is how born again people walk. And then, just a few meters away, you, <laughs> and you're still walking the spiritual, you know, uh, <laughs> poise. Have fun as you love God. Even this, one of the spiritual gifts is, is fruits is joy. That is what the that is what you know the kingdom of God is about. Now God has told you very well that the kingdom of God is not about mere words. It is about righteousness, it is about power and joy in the Holy Ghost. 
and you, you are there. So gloomy because you are filled of the Holy Ghost. Who is lying to who? Who is lying to who? Have joy. It's an adventure as you go forth. Has shared with us the life of his son and our master Jesus. And up there Paul would say that I shared this life, this message, and this knowledge about Christ. Hmm? And now God has shared the life of Christ. You know, sometimes we talk so much about other things except Jesus Christ in church. We talk about the devil and what he will do if you do not do ABCDFGH. If you don't pray, then the devil will do this. If you don't do that, if you don't do that, if you don't do that the devil every single place. Hello, Jesus Christ and God shared with us the life of his son. Why can't we share his son? Can't we share his son in the church? Let us share the word of God. Let us talk about this God. I have a friend who was in one of those congregations that they would have, they were, they had been spoken so much about the devil, so much so that she feared the devil more than she feared God. Look at what we are doing. So somebody does not sin because the devil will, you see. <laughs> What happened to not sinning because we love the Lord? We love God. That is, not, that is why we don't want to... That I love God so much. When you love someone, you, you don't want to, to some, do something wrong that will make him angry. But we have turned that around so, so much so that people don't sin because they fear the devil and not they fear God. Hmm? You're opening a door of the devil here. You're opening a door of the devil here. You're opening a door of the devil here. When this mansion of your life has so many doors that the devil has locked, so that if you do, he opens. Hello. She was so much afraid that even when she went to sleep, hmm, she would check under the bed to see if the devil was hiding down there. See, that's what we have done to the children of God. She would sleep with the Bible. Ah. As a pillow, so that the devil does not come. <laughs> so, are you preaching the devil or are you preaching Jesus Christ? Whose, whose life are you sharing? Whose life am I sharing? Am I sharing the life of Jesus Christ even as I interact with my fellow uh, Christians, even as I interact even with non believers? Am I sharing the life of Christ or is my talk so full of the devil, so much so that the people who are around me are actually wondering, wait? Hey, if you don't fast, the devil. If you don't pray, the devil. If you read it, the devil. If you read it, the devil. Hello. Kwani. What, what did Jesus Christ do on the cross of Calvary? When he came and said, Now all power has been given unto me. For be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Why can't I pray? Because I love this God so much so that I am so I want to be so intimate with him. The reason why I would want to spend all the time with my wife, you know, is because I love her. Not because if I don't, <laughs> not because if I don't stay with her, then I don't know what some, somebody I don't know will do what. No, I want to spend time with her because I love her. That's a good reason, you know. So I want to pray and spend time with my Father in heaven because I love Him. They as disciples, can we be disciples that do godly things because we love the Lord and not because the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil left right and center. Hmm? And then there it says, very good, God who got you started in this spiritual adventure shares with us the life of his son and our master Jesus. He will never give up on you. Never give up on you. God will never. Now, this is a father who has loved him so much that he has come and died for you, number one. So he has given you his life. Number two, he is, has given you everything that you need to live this particular life. Number three, he is there with you. Right there. <laughs> right there. Number four, he is not giving up on you. He is never giving up on you. He is not like a man. I'm sorry to say so, but sometimes you can have a friend, even born again friends, 
who are only friends with you because you are doing the right thing. Or because they presume and assume that you are doing the right thing. Or they presume and assume that your life has never had a dark spot in it. But the day they discover that, you know, uh, along the line, you did something. Or along the line, you tripped. And like God, who is there to keep you steady and on track, they flee. Sadly to say, even some of our congregations, they give up on people. The, the love of God is about souls. God is not giving up on you. It doesn't matter what people have done to you. It doesn't matter who has told you that your life will amount to nothing because you tripped in life here and there. No. As long as you come back to God, as long as you notice and realize that Jesus Christ and God is right alongside you to keep you steady and on track and you come back to God and say, Father, I am your child. He is not giving up on you. He is not giving up on you. It doesn't matter. A human being cannot define whatsoever your relationship with your God. It is only you who knows the truth about how close you are to God. Whether you take the things of God seriously or it is just another quagmire that you have no whatever, which his grace again is there for you and to keep you steady, God can never give up on you. He will pursue you. So, child of God, if you've been hurt, if you've been set aside, if you've been thrown away because of a mistake you made, sometimes even those mistakes are not even mistakes that you made. You are misunderstood. Or even you made the mistake. It doesn't matter. Hello, are you back to God? Come back to God. Even if you have been put out of the church, the church is you. God dwells in you. The church is not a building. It's not the cathedral. It is not the Mabati structure. It is not the under tree that you go to worship. No. It is you. Me. That's who the church is. So child of God, be encouraged that God who has shared his life with you, he will never give up on you. And then verse 9 ends by saying, never forget that. If you forget any other thing, never forget that. Never forget that God is not going to give up on you. Never forget, child of God, that God, God is not giving up on you. Never forget that. Never forget that. Oh, how I pray that you will never forget that. Remember that God loves you. Remember that he is there to keep you steady and on track. Remember that he has given you all spiritual gifts for you to live life as a spiritual adventure. Remember, child of God, that God is yearning and so thirsting in intimacy for you. So do these things because you love God. Go ahead and love of God, love God so extravagantly, so much so that the devil even does not exist for you. Why? Because you're so full of God. When we began this, we say that, you know, God wants our lives to be so full of him because that is who we are and that's what he has called us to be, that we may live lives that are full of God, full of God. Jesus Christ was so full of God that when he walked, the demons, he did not even have to say anything. The demons just started to scream. That's the kind of life that we have been called to live. A life that is so full of God that you are not afraid of the devil. But rather, the devil is afraid of you. You enter a room and there is a demon there and that demon cannot stand and cannot be at peace because you have entered the room. This is the kind of life that God has called us to live.
Thank you, Jehovah God, Father, because of this life. Thank you, my Father, that, Lord, you are calling out your children everywhere in this world to live a life that is so full of you, to live a life that is so graced and fully dispensed of your grace that they will dispense the grace of your gentleness and the grace of your love, the grace, my Father Lord, of your life in its various forms upon the surface of the earth. We pray, Jehovah God, that, Lord, will we walk this spiritual adventure with the confidence of knowing that you have given us all things that we need to be able to walk this. And not only that, but you are, but you are here again with us to keep us steady and on track. And not only that, but also, Lord, that you are not going to give up on us whatsoever. So thank you, Lord. In all things, comfort your children who have been hurt in various ways, who have been misunderstood, and who have been given, given up on by people, by human beings. But remind, remind them, oh God, remind this lady, remind her, Lord, that you have not given up on her. You have not given up on her. Child of God, God has not given up on you. Rise up from your ashes and let the love of God pour into your heart and your life be manifested in power and in glory in Jesus' mighty name.